Welcome back everybody, it's SGNG. So in this video, I'm covering a very short mechanics warm-up routine that you can do every single day. It's gonna help you get faster mechanics. And most importantly, this isn't just faster mechs like doing triple edits and stuff like that. It's gonna be useful things in-game that are gonna help you perform when it comes to actual tournaments. So many people, I see them just sitting there, they're practicing like zero ping maps and they're doing 1v1s, and they're basically just practicing for the sake of getting better at 1v1s and getting better like clips or something, right? Which is really not useful at all. You wanna be practicing in a way that's gonna help you actually in tournaments and is gonna help you actually place as well. So that's what this is gonna cover. Okay, so first of all, why am I not making you guys do some like crazy long routine and why is this only about 30 minutes in total? And it's just because I don't want you guys sitting there wasting your time doing like an hour of edit maps and stuff, right? Because that's not going to improve you as much as just doing 20 to 30 minutes of focus practice on what you actually need to work on. Also, this means that you can have more time to actually practice other things that are really important, like your aim, like playing arena, like playing scrims, which are obviously really important to have success in Fortnite as well. And also, this just means that you're not being completely worn out by the time you actually come to playing the actual game just by sitting there and playing so much beforehand. You're just doing 20 to 30 minutes, it's gonna warm up really nicely. You can do this instead of a warm up, and it's also gonna improve your mechanics a good bit. All right, let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing in any good warm is to make sure you have five to 10 minutes of cranking at the very start, just to make sure you feel actually warmed up before you get into the majority of the work. How about one distinction I want you guys to make is to stop using these zero input delay maps. This is obviously a good map for 1v1s and stuff like that, but don't use it to warm up because it's so unrealistic to how you actually have the delay in game, especially when it comes to real tournaments. Practicing a zero input delay map isn't gonna help your mechanics in tournaments. If you wanna be a really good creative player and have zero earnings, that is fine. But if you guys actually be good at comp, stop practicing on these maps where you've got zero input delay. Instead, you just want a little bit laggier, get used to the input delay in game, and also make sure you're working on things where you have to mess up more often because it means that actually forcing yourself to put in a weird situation where you're close to a wall or something, or you're in a scuffed situation and you have to edit out of it. It is a lot better, in my opinion, to warm up on these laggy maps like this one, or even warming up with other players in your lobby while they're building and you're building as well. Okay, so one of the worst things I see people doing when it comes to warming up in creative and just cranking, might seem like a minor thing, but it's just not having a shotgun in the inventory, and then also just pulling out their pickaxe the entire time, which is so unrealistic, it's something you really should avoid. If you pull out your pickaxe while you're in-game, or while you're fighting people, they're gonna hear it first of all, it's gonna make it very obvious what you're doing, and oftentimes you just get pumped in the face. Never edit running around like this, even though you have less input to late, make sure you always use your shotgun as you edit. Okay, the next part of warming up in creative like this is just to make sure you practice a bunch of different drills as you go around after you've actually done your main cranking session. So make sure you practice different things like sliding a cone for a box, like that. Practicing getting the back wall and the cone at the same time, like that as well. A lot of different things that you can practice doing, like cones under the wall as well. Just make sure you practice all these different mechanical things that you actually need to be doing in game to have good fighting success while you're warming as well, and just implementing them at the same time. Let's say you do a wall jump like that, practice doing the cone over the top, and just getting the habit of getting all the good crosshair placement, which is something we'll talk about next. Another map that I think is really useful to do if you guys kind of get bored of doing the same cranking and creative is this realistic crank map here, the crank simulator. So what you can go ahead and do is just whack on the 1.3% speeds, as you can see here. It's basically the pepper speed effect, as you can see. So I can run really quickly. And then when it comes to cranking with this, obviously you need to do everything a lot quicker to keep up with yourself. Probably the best thing that you can do is just practice cranking with pepper, especially with those chili chug splashes added into the game. This is a really useful skill to have for season eight. Another useful thing that I think you guys can do on this map is just to go ahead and select it to normal and then go into your sensitivity itself, make sure you remember what it was, and then just basically half it by 50%. So I'm playing at 9%, I'll just take it down to about 4.5 or 4.6 on each one. And that means that I'm gonna have to use a lot more mouse movement to actually keep up with what I'm doing. So for doing a triple edit, as you can see, I have to do a lot more and to run at normal speed, I have to move extremely quickly. This again, it's just really useful because it gets you in the habit of doing really efficient crosshair movement because you're using a much lower sense. Make sure you obviously change back and get used to your normal sense after you've done this for about five minutes as well. Okay, so another thing that I just mentioned is your crosshair placement while editing. This is the map that I'm gonna recommend, Raider 464, mechanics training map 4.6.4 obviously. Come in here, and there's a couple different scenarios in here that I think are really useful. There's a couple other maps that I think are also pretty good from Raider that you can do for like edit courses and stuff, but for actual mechanics, those really aren't that useful in my opinion. The one thing here that is extremely good is this crosshair training, where you can basically practice all of the different edits that you need to be doing in game. So you can see those edits, those edits. The ones I think are especially useful to practice is these bottom right arches, obviously your top right, obviously the top wall, those top walls as well. Just getting in the habit of practicing this wall edit here, as you can see, you can just follow exactly how quick you need to be doing it. It's something really useful in game if you guys ever find yourself messing up edits. Just doing this several times throughout a week is gonna improve your mechanics and you'll notice you're extremely quick at actually doing these edits more consistently in game.
Same with this one as well, just across top line. Same with this one, you can see there exactly what it means, right? And you can do that as quick as possible. And a lot of people with the top right is to do some like weird arc thing, just making sure you're doing it as concise as possible and then getting a really nice peek at the end of it. Again, this is just something I'd recommend doing if you feel you need to do it, which I probably do think you guys do, for about five minutes and make sure you're doing this for about two weeks straight. Go through enough scenarios of these and make sure you're doing this as quick as possible. Now the next thing on this map I think is really good as well, let me go back, is this edit timing over here. Obviously, these other things, you can do them. I personally wouldn't really recommend them too much. Go into this edit timing thing, and then you can see this basically you get maximum speed as you drop down, and as you fall, there's a load of edits just stacked on top of each other, so you can get your mechanics as quick as possible on a single tile edit. I wish there was a version of this for the walls, but just for the floor alone, just working your edit timing it is pretty useful. Okay, so the next map I'd recommend practicing after you've done a little bit of crosshair training for about five minutes, is this Raiders Peace Control practice map V3. You guys, Peace Control is bad. Definitely spend a lot of time in this map, about 20 minutes at maximum. Don't sit there for like an hour just running through everything loads of times. It's not gonna help you as much as you think. Instead, just make sure you're doing a small amount of focus things. And the thing is, it is infinite repetitions on the actual scenarios themselves. Okay, so go ahead and start it. Make sure you get a shotgun and an AR. And just two things I'd recommend before you start this is to avoid this basic peace control wall over here. It's really not too useful. And avoid these peace control tunnels. Again, it's just kind of not really valuable for like bang for your buck. If you want to sit for like two hours and run through everything, you can do. But I'd recommend just instead focusing on these main walls. They're probably the best value for time. So very simple, as you come to each one, just have a look at the actual scenario, how you're going to do it. And then very simply, just take your time and build up your speed as you go through later on. Again, don't spend more than 20 minutes in here. Just run through a couple of those scenarios or run through one wall and do each one a couple of repetitions each time. Okay, so now which maps would I actually recommend if you want to work on your mechanics if you're fighting against other players? And the one thing I'd recommend doing is trying to avoid just sitting there and playing loads of 1v1s versus the same player because oftentimes that's just not going to help you as much as you guys think. You're doing a zero input delay map, you're only fighting versus one player and you get the same experience just killing them over and over and dying over and over, right? It's not going to help you as much as you guys think. And oftentimes what I see now is just pros are playing so many different things. They're just sitting there and playing zone wars or they're playing real estate and not spending too much time 1v1ing apart from just to warm up at the very start. So make sure you guys are spending a lot of your time playing these zone wars or playing realistics and making sure you're doing multiple other players. Either doing 2v2s, 3v3s or 8s is probably the best things you get to practice fighting against a bunch of different people. The map's are a little bit laggier and obviously it's quite realistic to how it is in game, especially this map itself. If you do want to just do 1v1s versus another player, I'd recommend just using any type of realistic map where it's a little bit more laggy, you've got a little bit more input delay, it's a little bit more realistic to in-game, obviously. And of course, you've got like different load loadouts where you can fight with like blue pumps or fight with gold spazzers continuously and realistic maps to in-game as well. Okay, let's go and take a look at my one recommendation if you just want to practice some extra things on your own. Okay guys, this is probably the most useful bit of information in this video for just mechanics training and I think it's helped me in tremendously in terms of aim and mechanics and it's probably one of the best things that you can do on your own to practice. Just come down here where you can actually select your game mode at the main screen, see the feature tab, slide over along here until you see the realistic PvP, it should be somewhere towards the end. This is genuinely probably the one of those broken practice things that you can do. You fight. 19 different people at the same time it's realistic to in-game because there's like quite a decent bit of input delay loads of people are building you've got realistic guns each round if you just make sure that you build around yourself as you fight people it is genuinely one of those best, best things for practicing in game obviously some of the players are a little bit questionable but some of the players in here are actually pretty good and it is pretty useful practice make sure you try to vote for the random loot thing at the start and then you just gotta wait for it to fill up okay so as you can see i've got pretty realistic loadout and i've got pretty realistic maps as well Obviously the important thing here is just to make sure you build around yourself. Build around yourself as you fight different people just so you don't get landed on them easily. Which is probably the worst thing with this. But other than that, it is really good practice for fighting multiple different types of players at the same time.
Defense skill I think is really underrated when it comes to actually fighting game. It's just making sure you're not dying, especially when it comes to trio fighting. And this is again one of the best ways you can practice that. You've got loads of people landing you, land, trying to fight you at the same time. Making sure you just survive in different engagements. Is really useful and make sure that you try to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's basically just a bunch of things that you can do to work on your mechanics when it comes to playing Fortnite. And again, it shouldn't take more than 30 minutes and just make sure you're doing this very PP as well. I do think it's actually one of the best ways to practice at the moment. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like if you did and also subscribe if you enjoyed the content.